In today's episode on the Dive Saga channel, we are going on one of my favorite dives of all time. The Princess Alice Seamount in the Azores of Portugal. Our scuba diving journey today starts with a long series of planes, trains and automobiles to one of the lesser known diving destinations in Europe. When we think about scuba diving in Europe, most of us imagine the Mediterranean or maybe some land-based quarries. Very few of us immediately think about the Atlantic Ocean and even fewer imagine a dive site that lies 1500 kilometers out. The Azores are an autonomous region of Portugal consisting of nine volcanic islands that form an archipelago located in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. If this were not a scuba diving channel, we could dedicate an entire episode to the incredible natural beauty that makes up this magical place. But we are on a mission and must push forward to the island of Pico. The island of Pico is home to Mount Pico, the highest point in Portugal at 2,351 meters or almost 8,000 feet. If measured from their base at the bottom of the ocean to their peaks trusting high above the surface, the Azores are among the tallest mountains on the planet. Our destination today is such a mountain, a seamount. The story behind Princess Alice Bank or Princess Alice Seamount is actually quite interesting because it was discovered during an oceanographic campaign by Prince Albert I of Monaco. Uh, they were aboard a vessel called the Princess Alice and they were actually conducting bathymetric studies, which quite literally means measuring how deep the ocean is. Now these days we would do that with sonar and satellite data, but back in the 19th century they would literally use weighted rope that they would lower over the side of a ship and as soon as the rope stopped sinking that would be the depth in that exact location. So it's not a very exact science as you can imagine because it depends on how many individuals Individual spot checks one does. However, they did discover this seamount. Our journey starts at 5 a.m. in the morning when dive master Jess and Captain Mauro already have our vessel ready to go. The weather is somewhat overcast today and this far out in the Atlantic Ocean the water is never really truly flat, so we are in for a 3 hour bumpy ride. Luckily Mother Nature is providing us with an escort to the dive site. At the best of my abilities, I am identifying these dolphins as Atlantic spotted dolphins, or more precisely, 8,000 Atlantic spotted dolphins. This is the perfect way to take our mind off of the shaky boat ride and help us get hyped for some exciting dives. It's worth mentioning that the dive to Princess Alice Bank is actually not a very easy dive. Uh, it's 
again quite far into the ocean and the ride there is a little bit rough. I was actually personally worried that I would get pretty seasick. Luckily I didn't get seasick until, until the way back. <laughs> so uh, I mean I spent the next day in my room pretty much um, but it was so worth it. Unfortunately some people on the boat did actually get sick on the way out and so it is important to be prepared for that. I think it's a hundred percent worth it because of what's about to come next. Once we get in the water, two things are immediately noticeable. One is an extreme current, so we have to hold on to a descent line. And the other thing is a massive school of barracuda. The barracuda are quite deep, right on top of the seamount, and my camera sensor is barely able to register them against the colorless background. But then something catches our eye from overhead as three mobula rays swim by. Mobula rays are from a genus of rays that are often referred to as devil rays and they are in fact the exact reason we came all the way out here. When I look down, another mobula ray appears. Between the months of July and September, Princess Alice Seamount is an aggregation point for these mobula rays and their presence is almost 100% guaranteed. Depending on the species, devil rays can attain widths of up to 5 meters or 17 feet. Devil rays are not to be confused with manta rays, who can grow even larger. You can easily identify the difference between manta rays and these mobula rays by looking at the shape of their cephalic fins on both sides of the mouth. They use these cephalic flaps to funnel planktonic crustaceans into their mouths as a way of feeding. It is thought that these mobula rays ascend along Princess Alice Bank for exactly that reason. Dinner time. The keen observer can also see how many remoras are catching a ride. The mobula ray is considered an endangered species, given its decreasing population size. Even though they can live up to 20 years, they have a low reproduction rate, so we definitely consider this visit a true privilege. This Princess Alice bank dive consistently ranks as one of my number one dives of all time. It's hard work to get out here and the conditions are challenging, but the rewards are immense. The Azores in general are a phenomenal place for diving, especially if you're looking for scuba adventure in Europe. I've done many dives here with a wide variety of topography and wildlife but that will have to be for another time. Thank you so much for watching the Dive Saga channel. If you're curious what my other favorite dives of all time are, there is a video about that as well. Last year, we had an airplane crash here in uh, Utila, and um, in, as a dive by itself, it's a little bit whatever, it's a small Cessna airplane at 21 meters, about 70 feet. But what's a bit crazy about it is that I've taken that plane several times. I would really appreciate it if you could take the time to subscribe to the channel if you liked this video. You can also leave us a like and a comment, that would be super appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.